This program is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit rogers.com for more details. Welcome to Community Close-Up. I'm your host, Sharon Skelly, and today our guest is Rachel Patterson. Welcome, Rachel. Hi, thanks for having me. Rachel is um, a member of the working committee of, of the Grey Bruce Pride, and uh, she's also the, uh, I guess, the chair of the Grey Bruce Pride um, Parade this year. And so you're very busy. Yes. <laughs> um, and uh, I'd like to tell our, our viewers a bit about Grey Bruce Pro uh, about Pride, actually. Uh, we celebrate Pride in the whole month of June, is that correct? Yes. Yeah. And do you know, um, I guess I'm going to be asking you tricky questions and you don't have your computer in front of you, but um, how long have we been celebrating Pride in the month of June? Do you know? Uh, it's been uh, since the 70s, uh, yes. the late 70s. That we've been doing this since yes. the Stonewall riots. Right. And behind you, you have a lovely flag. And we were just talking about that before we went on air. And I said, I haven't seen one with that chevron on it. And you said it's just newly modified. It's a new version of the, the flag. And can you tell us a little bit about the flag? Because every um, color on that uh, represents something very important. So I'll let you tell the viewers about it. Yeah, so this behind me is the progressive flag, but there actually is an inclusive flag, which is actually more standard than this one. Um, so the different colors, the, the standard rainbow, the red represents life, orange is healing, uh, yellow is sunlight, followed by green, which is nature, blue is meant to represent harmony, and purple is spirit. Um, but the chevron uh, represents that we have always been led by these individuals and we need to remember that we need to be continuing forward with them. So the black represents all those that we've lost to violence. Uh, so it includes our missing and murdered indigenous women, girls and two spirit individuals. It includes those we've lost to AIDS um, and also the ongoing violence, domestic violence um, and uh, bullying that occurs. Then mm. the brown represents our BIPOC community. So our black indigenous and people of color and then the white, pink, and blue represent our trans community. But normally what you would see here as well, just kind of, oops, sorry, over there, um, by the, in where the white would be is there's actually a yellow triangle with a purple circle in it, and that represents our intersex community as well. So that is called the inclusive pride flag. So that's the standard now, but trying to get your hands on things in pride month right now, there's been a lot of shortage this year because I think everyone's really ready to go and, uh, uh, you know, celebrate because we've, we've waited a few years for this. So. Right. So a shortage is actually representing a good thing. It means that people are really out and they're celebrating and they're acknowledging all the groups and um, it's a good thing. It means that yes. we're, we're acknowledging and where um, the communities are, are um, they're, they're there, they're, they're, there's a lot of spirit. And yeah, um, yeah. Um, now you had a flag raising recently and the, I remember reading about it and, and you, you said some words that were quite, um, they were quite uh, moving and they meant a lot really to for the community for everyone and we should really heed them so can you tell us a little bit about the flag raising sure so um we did the flag raising and for the first time ever own sound is flying the flag for the actual duration of the month uh which is really exciting it's normally been about two weeks for us so we're really enjoying that and appreciate that support um, just having that visibility is really important for our community as well. Uh, but really the, the words that I had spoken to were just about creating safety and safe spaces. Um, we, we actually recently did a community needs assessment um, and um, we actually work year round to support individuals. Those of us that are on our working group are actually within the healthcare and social work sector. So um, we see a lot of where there's gaps um, throughout the community and where we need to help support individuals. Uh, and right now we're seeing a lot of youth in particular that are really hurting 
um, whether that's because they just haven't had support at schools because GSAs hadn't been up and running. They're kind of only just starting out again right now. Um, now, excuse me before you go on, what's a GSA for our viewers? Because I don't yeah. even know that. <laughs> so uh, GSA is kind of the old standard name, um, but it stood for Gay Straight Alliances. Oh, okay. We also see them now referred to as QSAs, so Queer Straight Alliance. Um, and we sometimes hear them as gender and sexually diverse communities uh, or just Skittles clubs. So just everything in the rainbow. Um, but we're just seeing those up and running again now, um, just because of COVID, not being able to gather in groups, those sorts of things. And then in some, in some cases, you know, kids might be at home and been coming to these times of, of realization, much like all of us have during COVID times, but they might be at home with like homophobic or transphobic parents that aren't accepting of them or within, um, in some cases, uh, you know, there might have been bullying at school, so they've had to switch schools. It's just been a really harmful time. So we were really trying to speak to the fact that we need allies. Um, we, we can't stand here without our allies. We need more visibility. Um, and the, the reality is, is the suicide, or suicide rates with youth in particular are skyrocketing when it comes to our queer community. There is so much overrepresentation. It's just awful. But the reality is that having one supportive person in a queer youth's life decreases that suicide rate by 60%. So if they can just have one teacher, one family member, one member within their community that they can readily access, that makes so much different and it will actually um, help save lives. So mm -hmm. that's it, that's our big queer agenda is we just want people to be alive. <laughs> that's well, all. Big agenda. Um, I experienced, uh, when you were talking about safe spaces and uh, wanting people to be safe in our community, um, it's a bit political, but, uh, you know, it's, it happened in our community, so I'm going to talk about it. And a lot of people were talking about it. I, at Easter, wanted to go to Mass. And I went online, and I thought, well, I'll check Mass times. And I think I was one of the first people to see this diatribe by a, I won't mention names, and I won't mention the, the exact parishes but um i saw this diatribe by the by the parish leader um totally against the um uh, flag waving uh, uh by in front of the school or in front of the board office i think it was and it was it was awful and i couldn't believe what i was reading and all i could think of was we need these things because exactly for what you were saying um, we have students who are, um, I, I, I don't know the language, so you'll have to forgive me. I grew up in the 70s and 60s, so we didn't learn the language, and I don't want to offend people, but we'll say gay, queer, I don't know what we would call it. The appropriate term is the two-spirit and okay. LGBTQ, QIAP plus oh. community. Okay, so I'll let you. I said it's a mouthful, but each one of those different letters yeah. has... has had to fight to get the acceptance that's right and that's why i don't want to be offensive yeah so i know there are students struggling with their sexuality and to to if someone went on there and read that or if someone was at school and knew that a leader in their community felt this way they may just really feel unsafe and i thought i can't believe i'm reading this well naturally i didn't go to the mass because i can't support that because it, it would be offensive to my friends and to any student. And I just thought it's 2022. And I know that the previous pastors would never have written that. I know this is one singular person. So that was my experience with knowing that there are leaders in our community that do not encourage the safe spaces for our students. So when, when I read when I read what you said, I didn't go to the flag raising. I wasn't feeling well that day, but I would have had I felt well. And then reading what you said, I thought, yes, there aren't there are people that do not promote safety for these children and adults, and we have to do better. 
That's just my little two cents. Um, it is political, but it, it was political. Mm -hmm. And um, it is our community and they are our leaders and they have to do better and they should do better and they must do better. I, I would like to commend though that Catholic school board, they've done so much work to go and create that inclusivity, which is funny because it's actually from the Ontario Education <laughs> Board's standing. Oh, so, and one um, person shouldn't, Yeah. Um, their voice should not be um, undo all the good work that, that a group of people have done, but it just, it, it infuriated me. And I grew up in the Catholic church and I had a wonderful, uh, nurturing, beautiful people that would never have approved. We'll, we'll go back to um, Pride Month and, and that's part of your, your folk, well, it's your mandate really is to encourage and educate and um, nurture all those things. It's positivity. Um, so what are you doing in, during Pride Month? So Pride Month, we have a lot of different uh, activities that are going on. Um, we have um, our own sound poet laureate uh, Rico is actually doing a poetry segment um, for all ages. And I know it's like during a school day, but at the same time, it's June, like, I think it's like 22nd. Yeah, June 22nd. Um, so school's pretty much wrapped up by that point. Anyways. Um, <laughs> but it, it's really exciting, too, to be able to have that because there are so many artistic individuals. And it's actually being held at the Georgian Bay Center of the Arts, which has actually started mm -hmm. a Pride Night um, locally as well, too, which is oh, nice. has been really refreshing to go and have um, happen. So it's nice to just have those kind of socials. Um, there's also, I mean, there's our parade as well. We also have a prep for pride parade too. So if individuals are interested, um, there's several of us that are on our working group that happen to work at Mawikwadong and we have a giant craft room. So we're just going to host it here because it happens to be a free accessible public space. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to have that and then follow it up with our um, pride parade. And while while it's a very exciting day and we can't wait for it, we know it's it's sometimes just the one day that some people feel safe to be visible that day, right? So it's really important for us to be able to go and have that. Um, and we're really looking forward to it. But this year, um, previously it hadn't been run by Grey Bruce Pride. So this is the first year for us. And in two months, we've been able to pull this together. So like it has been a lot of work and I, cannot thank our volunteers enough that are helping out with this or our sponsors. We have so many great sponsors this year and it's really lovely. Um, so our sponsors right now, um, Mawikwadong actually helps, uh, has given so much uh, to us. We also have Bruce Power, Tibbs ATM and um, Shy Wolf Candles as well um, and Slab Town. Um, which is a local dispensary from Saugeen. So those are our major sponsors right now, but we'll have all of our sponsors coming out later. Um, we'll be releasing all of that next week. So we have a vendor's market. We have some food trucks coming in. Um, and then we have a dunk tank. So some really exciting people that will end up being in the dunk tank. <laughs> um, and that's going to be a bit of a fundraiser for ourselves. So that way we can help put on the events that we do year round. Um, and then we also have like just bouncy castles and excitingly enough, we also have a performance stage. So there'll be some drag that'll be there. Um, there'll be some dance kind of, um, groups happening. And then also we have the summer folk youth discoveries folks too, that will actually oh, nice. be as well. Nice. Um, so yeah, we're really looking forward to all of it. And then afterwards you can just head over to Heartwood and go. Uh, check out the Dragon Cabaret Show, which is a yes. gender diverse Dragon Cabaret Show. So, um, yeah, we're really looking forward to it. But, you know, we we really do want to stress the fact that, um, you know, the day is really about increasing more and more visibility, right? Absolutely. Because we need it year round. So we need to make sure that the people that are showing up that day are showing up for us in July and August and December, right? Mm -hmm. So um, if there's any agencies that are looking for um, how to make their spaces safer or anybody 
whether they're, they're parents or business owners, just reach out to us because we're happy to help out with that anti-oppression training. Um, but the, the reality is, is right now there's especially, um, you know, this isn't necessarily the most progressive in the ways of, um, you know, acceptance for our community. Um, so having things like our crosswalk mean a lot to us um, because it means that, you know, there is that increased visibility. But the reality is, is there's so much societal negativity and beliefs that have been normalized towards us. So each person, especially youth, takes that upon themselves. Mm -hmm. So um, just like all of us, <laughs> like our own um, views on discrimination and racism and ableism and ageism that we all have to unpack. Um, we have that same thing too, but it can manifest into internalized homophobia. So people might be, um, you know, without having proper visibility and role models and having that acceptance and support, um, people will go and start putting that upon themselves. So it can lead to self-harm. It can lead to poor self-image. It leads to bad relationships. Um, and like oppressing of oneself essentially. So we really need to make sure that we have that stuff so that way we can go and make sure that we have safe community members. That's why we're seeing people coming out at 50 and 60 as well. It's not just youth, we're seeing that a lot here as well too. Yes, well, as I said before, I grew up in the 60s and 70s and people didn't even really talk about their sexuality or you know straight and that was it anything else was really abnormal and and no one talked about it people got married even if they shouldn't have really you know and a lot of them are now enjoying the life they should have lived back then mm -hmm. but at least now they're happy which is sad in a way because you know they should have been happy their whole life yeah there's been a lot of like very horrible endings to marriages and in some cases you know you end up losing your children in the wake of it too right so mm -hmm. i mean it's really awful for people to have to go and put that upon themselves right mm -hmm. um and often it leads to some attachment disorders and all of that so i mean it's mm -hmm. just really unfortunate yes um, but yeah. uh, hopefully this generation with a lot of support and resources that you know that you you're groups like yours have it will be um, a little better for them but um like i have um grand i live with my grandchildren and um you know my daughter-in-law is always you know we have books and and they're they learn um like it's just there's nothing different mm -hmm. like it's normal and there shouldn't be anything different yes so one of the things that we've been doing, um, and we started it last year, is that we have a different term of the day that is on our Facebook page. So um, every day at 8 a.m., it just goes, and that's the term of the day. Um, and last year, we kind of ended with allyship, but we decided to go and start with it. So that way, people understand why there's an importance to um, allyship. Um, so I hope people weren't offended thinking like, oh, they're just talking about cis sexism and heteronormativity, but um, it's really important to be able to understand all of those different terms and what they mean. So that way, when we start unpacking what it means to be trans and non-binary or what the difference is between gender identity and gender expression, um, that people can really understand that. Um, and then at 4.30 every day, we've been having one that's simply for families um, or youth. So that way they can go and help understand things too. Um, sometimes it might be a reminder to some parents too of like, here's some really great things that you need to remember in order to support that kid. Um, right. So it's been really great. Um, I'm, I'm going to go on and, and look for those words. I'm often on Google. I'll hear a word and I have to go on Google and look it up because I don't know the language. That's what I was saying. I don't know the language. I want to learn. And I and and that was one of the questions I wanted to ask you. Do you do you have resources for people like me that want to learn but don't yeah. know them? Yeah. So everybody um has been really great in trying to uh, figure out more acceptance as well, right? So we've had lots of people reaching out to us um, 
and we're looking to go and have a special landing page on our Facebook as well, or not on our Facebook, sorry, on our website that is like, you know, um, gender terms 101. Um, so that way it's a good safe space as well. Um, but we normally end up using um, the gender galaxy and the sexuality galaxy, and they're fantastic because it shows that everything's like a spectrum and things can kind of like weave in and out kind of like the Milky Way. So it's really fantastic. Um, and it's a nice way to go and teach things too, because it shows that some things might kind of overlap a little bit too. Mm -hmm. and so yes, because you don't want to offend someone inadvertently when you mean well, but you, you could offend someone mm -hmm. and, you know, end up in trouble. Um, and now you have resources then for, for, for your community, you have all kinds of resources and how would people access those resources? Um, so they can get a hold of us either on Facebook or Instagram um, or through our email as well, which is info at gmail.com. The other thing too that we are so fortunate to have is Karen Houle that sits on our working group is also the only actual specific staff in all of Graham Bruce that works strictly within our two spirit and LGBTQ QIA plus community. So Karen is a fantastic um, two spirit individual who is so great at showing up and being um, they're employed by Mwikwadong and they run one of Ontario's three building safe gender and uh, sexually diverse communities programs. So it's a part research project as well. That's how we were fortunate to do our community needs assessment. But Karen can um, work with individuals regardless of indigeneity um, to help support them. And if that means supporting their family as well, can help out with that. Um, and also gets to go into the schools as well too. So um, that's really a great way to gain access as well. So Karen um, and that program at Mawikwadong is really fantastic because it's about building safe spaces. So that means allies as well, right? So um, yeah, we're, we're really fortunate to be able to have that. But I mean, they also need a helper. They need, they need yeah, help. one person. Can I? Yeah. Now you said she goes into schools. Does she have to be asked, or does she book visits? Like, does she go in to do and en like enrichment teaching, or does she have to go in just to to um, field crises, as you know, just putting out fires? Uh, so Karen uh, goes by pronouns they them. Um, and they go in if they've been requested, uh, if a family member has brought up a concern and needs some support in there as well too. Um, but they've been really great. The, the school boards know that that's the contact person as well okay. too for trying to have, get help. Um, but you know, there, there are things that, you know, at some of the schools that do need to happen. We do need to have gender neutral washrooms. We do need to have um, menstrual items in all washrooms because it's not just a female washroom where you need to have menstrual yeah. items. Um, and, you know, just increasing um, knowledge, having teachers and whatnot know and feel comfortable respecting pronouns um, and names and know that they aren't preferred pronouns or preferred names, that they just are their names because that's who they are. Um, so that's really important. And we're also working um, or will be working too with kind of our healthcare network as well, because we don't have a lot of GPs here that have that appropriate language as well either or supports. There's no counselors. The, the closest safe healthcare actually is in Guelph um, at the Arch Clinic and people can self refer, which is fantastic, um, but it's a six month wait list and they can work with individuals that are both pre and post puberty as well as adults. Um, but other than that, it's like going to the sick kids hospital if you're a youth and that wait list is going into 2025 right now. So it's, you know, that's like three years of a youth internalizing all of that shame and everything about not being comfortable within their body. So it's really important to have more access to such things as those healthcare and counseling. So that way people can go and, you know, Un unpack all of those things. We also need better access to transportation, 
housing and employment because especially our trans or our trans community faces a lot of transphobia. Yeah. Um, there's been a lot of uh, isolation as well. Um, yeah, but we are running a gender gear library as well too. So if folks are needing gender affirming gear, contact us at Mawikwadong or Great Bruce Pride and we will help get people set up if they can't afford it as well. Um, we even have some really fantastic principals that are helping out with that. So, you know, it's just, <clears throat> we're getting there. We just need to keep getting there. <laughs> do you have services for someone like, say they don't wanna go out do their shopping because they're feeling like they can't. Do you have someone that will go do that for them or? Uh, we don't have anything like that that exists, but there are some places like, um, that do grocery deliveries as well too but yeah i mean that's why we need more acceptance right and we are yeah. um going to be working um with creating pink pages sort of of safe spots um different agencies companies toronto used to have it and it's been really hard of trying to figure out how to do it but i think we're going to try um I just came up with this last week. So the attempt is that after June, uh, we're gonna reach out to 211 and see if we can figure out ways to go and have them help us have a landing page where agencies can go and upload their information and we can kind of screen from there as far as safety goes. Um, because there are spots that aren't necessarily safe for people exactly. to go. Yeah, and yeah, I'm thinking that. And like, even if someone wanted to go and buy clothing, uh, mm -hmm. You know, they might not be feel really comfortable going some places, but maybe someone could go with them, you know, just things yeah. that might help, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, because that, that would be a real problem for some people. Yeah. yeah. And, and we are going to also, just as we talk about that, we are um, doing a bit too where if individuals are coming out, if this is their first pride that they're comfortable being out, um, or if they're new to the area, um, just let us know, reach out to us on, you know, any of the social media platforms or through our emails, uh, because we're going to have a special kind of like grouping that people can get together for at the Pride and the street fair afterwards, just for that safety purposes as well, too. So just yeah. let us know. Good idea. Well, Rachel, thank you for joining us. You've given us a lot of information. We could talk for another half hour. But um, if someone wants information on Grey Bruce Pride, they can go on Instagram, Twitter, or um, what, uh, you have a website and a Facebook page. But we also want to remind people that you have events all month and you have a parade coming up on June the 18th, 18th at uh, 2 p.m., right? Yep. And it is a new location uh, this year, so it's going all around the market area. Right. And it's going to be broadcast on Rogers TV, so you can catch it and then we'll have it on again for people that uh, can't make it. So thank you for joining us here on Rogers TV. Um, uh, join us again here on Rogers. There's lots of great programming. Join me again here on Community Close Up. And remember, it's your community, so take part. And bye for now. I'm Sharon Skelly, and thank you for joining us, Rachel. Thanks for having me. Call the Rogers TV viewer response line. Email us or connect with us on social media. October 5th, 2014, my daughter was hit by a train. She was walking along the sides of the tracks and it shattered her world. <laughs> Looking for the best way to get the Major League Baseball games you want to watch? Rogers Super Sports Pack has you covered. With MLB Extra Innings, you'll have a premium ticket to